By the way, guys, I recorded this after the video. I forgot to mention, today I had a really great collaboration with Five Wide Football. He's a fan fantasy football uh, expert primarily, but we had a nice collaboration over on his channel. Go check it out. Sub him up. All the good things. Really hope to have him on my channel soon, probably Monday. Go check him out, guys. Yo, what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's your boy No Name back at it again with another Giants video. Uh, this time, since it was, you know, basically a really slow news day, news week in general. I ain't gonna lie to y'all, I kind of been looking all over the place for something to talk about. But have no fear, I always got something to talk about. <laughs> uh, Tomorrow, it's going to be either Saturday or Sunday, I'll be dropping my next top 5 list. It will be on linebackers, the top 5 linebackers in the NFL 2020 draft. And yes, it will have my commentary. I'll still try to keep it shorter than 15 minutes, you know, nice and concise. But that's going to be dropping on Saturday or Sunday. And then next weekend will be my next and probably final. I don't know yet. But... Next weekend will be my next seven round mock draft. The first one done after Giants free agency. Technically free agency isn't finished yet, but I believe majority of the moves that have been made are really about the only moves that we're gonna see. And part of that is because of what I'm gonna mention in here. I, I literally just learned today. Um, shout out to the entertainer guys. You guys already know who he is. The entertainer talking sports, a great Giants YouTuber. Uh, in his vid today, he talked about Giants cap space a little bit, and this brought to my attention the absolutely astonishing number uh, of the amount of money the Giants have left in their cap space. Now, according to SpotTrack.com, and I don't exactly know how to read this table, I'm going to put up the table up. According to them, one column, it says the estimated space available based on their available uh, figures is $12,800,000. $87,000 so a little under 13 million which is around what the Giants would need to pay for you know what they do in the draft So if that's the case, I don't expect anything else You know that this is all the moves we're gonna see then they're gonna go into the draft and you're gonna draft whoever it is But also just two columns over uh, Is another column that has the same literally the same um, Name to it. It says cap space and when you hover over it, estimated space available based on our figures, the same thing as the other one, it says the Giants have only $5,567,000 left in cap space. Now, what this tells me, and maybe, um, like I said, I'm not sure how to read this table. It could be like a high estimate of what they have or a low estimate of what they have. But in the first one, the higher estimate, it says top 51 in the column name there. And then cap space, it says all. Maybe top 51 as in, I don't know, the, the top 51 players on their rosters? I have I have no idea. The, whatever the case is, Giants have little to no cap available, right? If it's the $12 million one, I don't expect them to make any other moves because that's what they need to cover the draft. If it's a $5 million one, they're low-key in some trouble because they need to restructure some contracts to cover the draft. Whatever the case is, Giants have to make some moves to be, you know, enter the season comfortably and enter the draft at a nice uh, cushiony place with their money. Now then, that brings up today's topic, John Gruden and the Las Vegas Raiders. Gotta get used to saying that. Well, how does John Gruden and the Las Vegas Raiders relate to the Giants? Well, for the longest time now, and it's only been about a month, so it's not really that long, when I've been discussing draft scenarios with you guys, talking about it on the channel and whatnot, even with my friends, I've said my favorite draft scenario would be a trade down with the Vegas Raiders for their 12th pick, 19th pick, and maybe like a future third or second rounder, maybe even one of this year's third rounders, because the Raiders have like three third rounders this year, I think. But I think that would be the dream trade down scenario, because the Giants end up right smack dab in the middle of the first round with the 12th pick, a pick that they could still get a top four offensive tackle, and a 19th pick, a pick where they could get either A, a really good edge rusher of the second tier, B, a really good linebacker of the second tier, maybe even the first tier, depending on how to... Um, how to draft falls, you know, see a really good safety of the first tier or, you know, cornerback or whatnot with the 19th overall pick. There's really a lot of ways you can go. And for that reason, you know, taking two, what in my opinion would be immediate starters and impact players at 12 and 19 for the team, I think that's the best trade down scenario. The problem with that trade down is that I've never 
believed it would happen because I never had reason to believe that the Raiders would trade up for anything. I mean, I they, in order for that trade up to happen, they need to be in love with some dude up there that makes them want to trade up. And according to some reports that came out today, very conveniently, John Gruden and the Oakland Raiders may be in love, not Oakland, Vegas Raiders, with Justin Herbert of Oregon. Now, this is per NFL Draft Scout on Twitter. According to NFL Draft Scout, a longtime source who worked closely with John Gruden said he wouldn't be surprised if he fell in love with Justin Herbert or Jordan Love and makes a move to get them. Hashtag NFL Draft. Now, yes, it does say or Jordan Love in there, but I personally think it might be Justin Herbert. I'll get into a little bit more, but if this is true, this is a good sign for the Giants. If this is true, if I'm Dave Gellman, I'm picking up the phone, I'm talking to Gruden, asking him what he's thinking about trading up to fourth overall and snagging Herbert away from the Chargers, from maybe the Panthers, from whoever else up there ahead of the Raiders, and there's quite a few mountain teams, you know, you could snag them away from the Jaguars even, to for them to get their future quarterback. And I know some of you might be saying, well, the Raiders are already set at quarterback. They signed Marcus Mariota. And to that, I will say, if Marcus Mariota is truly the Raiders, you know, next franchise quarterback, I am sorry for them and I feel sorry for their players and their fan base because he's not a franchise quarterback and all the moves they made in this offseason and previous offseasons, which at first seem a bit crazy, you're starting to see something shaped there. You're starting to see an actual team being built in Vegas. You're starting to see them, you know, the team that they're going to have come this 2020 season when they open up in their new season, you're going to see something good on the field something better than what we initially thought would be there and i would feel sorry for them if marcus mariota is who they believe in in my opinion mariota is nothing more than a stopgap and maybe even you know a good backup that vegas plans to have for you know the next year or two i really don't see him as a starter i don't think they believe that he's their starter either i think the raiders are going to go into the draft and take a quarterback that's my firm belief the problem is i don't know if it's going to be this year or next year if these reports are true and this is a Bleacher Report article. Let me skim through it real quick. They agree with me. It's unlikely, but they won't put it over to happen, you know, with John Gruden, considering this is the guy who traded away Khalil Mack and Amari Cooper, the two best players on each side of the ball, respectively, off, uh, defense and offense. This is the quote, according to the uh, longtime scout. I won't say it's on. I would say it's unlikely, but you can't ever rule anything out when it comes to John. He loves quarterbacks and thinks he can get the best out of them. Would surprise me. Would it surprise me if he fell in love with Jordan Love or Justin Her Herbert and made a move to get them? Not one bit. It wouldn't surprise me either. Like I said, John Gruden isn't exactly known for you know his uh, logistical <laughs> thinking and uh, I guess normal way of going about things. Not exactly normal is the word I'm looking for, but the way Gruden goes about things and build his team, it, it's it's unique in its own way. And it wouldn't surprise me if he is truly you know, in love with one of these quarterbacks and would want to trade up to get them. And he has, once again, the perfect draft assets and capital to do so. And this would help the Giants out tremendously, not only because we're adding two impact players, but going back to the cap space, trading down from 4th overall to 12th and 19th overall helps out your cap space a lot because the Giants won't need $12 million anymore, you know, to pay off whoever you're drafting. I think it drops down quite a bit to maybe like eight or seven million dollars because those top like five players respectively, they're getting paid the big bucks. They're getting paid more than anybody else in the draft versus the guy that's going at number 12 and the guy that's going at 19. So it would help the Giants out in, you know, a couple of ways. You get to knock out more than one areas of need. You, you save some money along the way. Um, whatever the case is, once again, this Vegas Raiders trade comes up as something that I really didn't think would be realistic a month ago when I proposed it. But now, with these reports coming out, and I expect to see more of them, more of them in the coming uh, weeks to the draft, because recently I'm starting to see this idea of this trade going around on Twitter, on Reddit, you know, just going around the Giants media verse a lot more frequently than it was a couple weeks ago. You know, where there's smoke, there's fire, or maybe I'm reading a little bit too much into it. Let me know what you think. That's what I got for y'all today. What do you think? Hi right, guys, thanks for watching. Put your comments down below. Make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. Until next time, I'm out. Yer.